Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessie, if you are new here. I do all kinds of lifestyle vlogs, motherhood videos, a little bit of personal finance, but today I'm actually gonna talk to you guys in a sit down video about my experience with anxiety. So for me, my anxiety has been focused mostly around health anxiety, postpartum anxiety, and OCD. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I've talked about this in a lot of my vlogs, but I haven't been able to like go deep into it. So I thought I'd tell you my experience with anxiety, where it's popped up in my life, OCD, postpartum anxiety diagnosis, things like that. And we'll talk about that all in today's video. I do have some notes on my phone, so if you see me looking down, I kind of wrote out everything that I could think of. So I just want to talk through this, and then if there's anything in, like specifically that you would like me to dive deeper in in a different video or in a vlog or something just let me know and i can do that let's get started i'm going to start by telling you my background with anxiety growing up in my mid to late 20s what changed now that i'm in my mid ish 30s so anxiety and depression is something that i've always been aware of people in my family have dealt with both of those things i really didn't deal with a lot of that stuff i had a lot of what I would consider situational anxiety, where I would get anxious about certain things, like if I was getting on a plane or before a test or if there was a tornado coming, something like that would spike my anxiety and it would get pretty high. Otherwise, my like consistent anxiety was just like not really a thing. I didn't really experience that much. I did have little bouts of like sadness and what was classified initially as depression in college they put me on an antidepressant and it totally messed with my body i felt terrible so i went off of it and then they later found out that i had hashimoto's hypothyroid which is probably where a lot of those symptoms came in so then if we fast forward so i met my husband in 2016 moved to chicago in 2017 we got engaged in 2017 and in 2018, we actually moved from this small little apartment we were living in into a high rise in Chicago that we had been so excited to move into. And it was much higher rent than we had been paying, but it was something that we both could manage with like my job and Ben's job. And then we moved into this place and Ben's health took a turn the first time, at least since I had been with him. He has like these big health, not catastrophes, but just like big health issues where it just like knocks them out for a really long time. It happened again when we moved back to Chicago. So I think that it's a Chicago thing. So that was in 2018 and that took a really big hit on our relationship because he wasn't able to work. He was acting completely differently than he had ever acted before. Uh, it put a strain on our finances because we didn't have combined finances at the time and we were supposed to be pay paying things evenly, but because he owned his own business, all of a sudden he like wasn't making an income because he was sick and wasn't going to work. So all of a sudden I was expected to cover more of our rent. I was expected to cover more of Cora's finances, things like that. And it took a really big hit on our relationship and on my health. And that's when I started to notice like a decline in my overall health with like Hashimoto's and some gut issues I was having and having a little bit more anxiety than I had ever had before. Moving on from that, we moved out to the suburbs of Chicago and then 2020 hit. We had all the stuff that happened in 2020. I was in a terrible job, just like terrible for me. I've done videos on that before. I can link them above, but by the time we moved to Raleigh, I was still in this job. I was having panic attacks quite consistently around this job and I just had so much more anxiety in my body than I, had, than I ever had before. And I would have these big, big, big jumps of anxiety have these panic attacks and then like continue moving through it. I was still seeing a therapist for a little bit during 2020, but then in 2021, I kind of took a break from all of that. In December of 2020, I ended up leaving my job. I thought that that was going to like fix everything mental health wise. Unfortunately, it did not. I was no longer having consistent panic attacks like I was before, but now I was just consistently anxious because Ben wasn't making barely any money in his business. I just quit my full-time job. We now had to pay for health insurance. I was bringing in a good amount of money with my freelance, more than Ben was making with his stuff, but we were really struggling to get by. And that like financial, constant financial stress, the stress on our 
relationship, all of that stuff was really, really hard for us. In like mid 2021, I ended up having a miscarriage, which just totally threw me off for the whole rest of the year. I felt like that was in like mid August. I felt like earlier in that year, I had started kind of feeling a little bit better mentally and then that hit and I was just out for the rest of the year. I always felt depressed. I didn't want to get off the couch. Uh, when I did get off the couch, I was anxious. I started being more anxious just doing like normal everyday tasks or like driving places or things like that. My mental health just like never was the same. I would say honestly since like 2018, it started changing and then 2020, 2021, it just kind of never was the same. April 2022 is when I found out I was pregnant with my daughter Ivy. And actually in pregnancy, once I got through the first trimester, which was pretty terrible for me, <laughs> Once I got through first trimester, I actually felt pretty good mentally for the first time in a long time. I started to feel more like myself. The only thing that I struggled with was anxiety just around the pregnancy. Like if I would have a symptom of any kind, it would totally freak me out. And that's like really where my health anxiety kind of stepped in which ended up becoming bigger later. But within pregnancy, I would be okay until I would start having a symptom and then I would be Googling and trying to figure out what was going on. I don't think that's that abnormal for a new mom or something like that, but mine would get a little bit obsessive, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The end of my pregnancy, unfortunately, ended in a traumatic birth. I had some, what I would consider misconduct by a doctor in the beginning of my birthing experience and then at the end of my birthing experience it ended in a c-section which was traumatic in and of itself but then I also wasn't able to see my daughter right away and there's just like a whole story with that but it was just a very traumatic experience for me even postpartum was pretty traumatic for me not only was I like recovering from a c-section I was bleeding a lot I bled a lot postpartum and my health anxiety just skyrocketed like right after birth I was having panic attacks in the middle of the night because I was thinking that I was dying I was constantly checking Ivy to see if she was breathing and I mean constantly and if I would have a thought of like I need to check her and I wouldn't I assumed that she was dying so like it was just really really overwhelming to have all of these thoughts of like consistently feeling like my baby was dying or like I was dying I would start to fall asleep in the middle of the night and I would think that I was dying like when you know your heart rate or like your breathing kind of slows I literally my brain told me that I was dying all of the like excess bleeding I was having I was really struggling with that as well and like worried about what was going on yeah it was just like a really 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 tough time for me in that postpartum period especially like I don't know January because Ivy was born literally the second to last day in December and so like January through March was pretty hard for me mental health wise then we decided we were going to move back to Illinois from Raleigh and I started having a lot of anxiety around that I was afraid if we moved back we would get sick again which Fun fact, we did. I was afraid of moving from some place that I love. Just all of this stuff was super overwhelming. And I think around, we moved at the end of May, the middle of April, I finally went and saw my previous therapist that I had had in Raleigh. I just had a few sessions with her. And she was the one that told me that it sounded like I had OCD, specifically postpartum anxiety and with OCD tendencies. Um, and we kind of started working through what that would look for, like for me and how I could find specialized help once I moved back to Illinois since I wouldn't be able to work with her anymore since she was based in North Carolina. So fast forward, we moved back to Illinois. In fact, literally moving back to Illinois, I had multiple panic attacks. I almost had a panic attack driving back into Illinois. If you know anything about Illinois, driving that Indiana border into Illinois is literally the worst and I it was just terrifying because I was in the car with my baby who I was having all of these intrusive thoughts around her dying something happening to her things like that it was just like really really overwhelming like even my entry into Illinois I was like I hate it here 
it just immediately gives me anxiety. Just being here gives me more anxiety. Then I started seeing an OCD specialist once I moved here. So OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, there are a lot of people that say, oh my gosh, I'm so OCD. And they're talking about like organizing things or whatever. that's not what, that's not what, or <laughs> that's not what OCD is. OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. I can leave some links down below. For me, how it shows up as an adult postpartum is intrusive thoughts and compulsive checking. When I was younger, it showed up in different ways because I found out that I actually have had OCD most of my life. Um, there were things that I used to do as a child that were OCD and I didn't even realize that that's how I was like coping with stress as a child. But as I got older, which I think happens for a lot of people with OCD, you tend to have intrusive thoughts and they can be around really scary things. I don't know like how deeply I should go into this, but I just wanna say, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I have intrusive thoughts all the time. Having intrusive thoughts isn't abnormal. Having the type of intrusive thoughts that I had, the amount of checking and the amount of fear that it brought up for me is the part that brings in the OCD postpartum anxiety. And then for me, mine is almost always surrounded around my health or Ivy's health. For some examples, I would imagine everything that would happen in a car accident if something happened to my baby. I would imagine walking down the road and I would see a car. I would, my brain immediately would show me pictures of somebody trying to take Ivy and me trying to defend them. I would picture myself dying and Ivy living without a mom. I'm talking like intricate thoughts and going deep into some of the scariest pictures of your life and my brain was just constantly playing them. It, I didn't even need to be triggered. It was just a constant reel of terrible things happening to myself or to my daughter. And it was just terrible. And then of course, <laughs> we moved back in June. Ben ended up having another health crisis in August. And that was really hard because I was dealing with some really, really damaging OCD, anxiety tendencies and just stuff in general. And he kind of came in and had this health crisis and he like couldn't leave the house. We had to ask for help for people from people. And it was just really hard because I felt like if I'm being honest, I felt like his health was more important than mine. At least that's how I was, like I felt was made to feel. It was just really hard again on our relationship and on parenting. He wasn't able to take care of Ivy as much. He didn't work for a couple of weeks, which really freaked me out. He wasn't able to go get groceries. He wasn't able to take Cora to the vet after she broke her leg. He wasn't able to take Ivy to the doctor. So now, I'm having all these intrusive thoughts about something happening to Ivy. I don't wanna even leave the house and be alone, but I have to because somebody has to get groceries. Somebody has to take Ivy to, <laughs> to the doctor, all of these things. So I'm having to like push myself out of these really, really scary thoughts that a lot of people with OCD take a long time to work through. There's like a process <laughs> of working through these things, I can't think of what it's called right now, but like I was working through a process with my therapist of like literally just walking like one house down and coming back because I was just like so afraid, especially to walk alone with Ivy or to go anywhere alone with Ivy. And I was kind of forced into that based on like where Ben was with his health. So then around that same time, some health stuff started popping up for me. So as you guys know, I haven't really felt myself physically for a really long time. I found a breast lump in August maybe of last year. I ended up having to get a biopsy. Thankfully it was benign, like not an issue, but that was really scary. I had to do that all by myself because at that time Ben wasn't able to leave the house. So I had to go to this biopsy, do all these things completely on my own. It was triggering like some trauma from my birth as well, having to do all these things by myself. So it was just like a really scary time. I also started having a lot of issues with breathing and heart palpitations and just overall Hashimoto's health issues, which now I'm finding out might have to do with mold toxicity, which is a whole other <laughs> kit and caboodle. So moving through that, I ended up beginning of 2024, I ended up having a pap. It came, pap smear, it came back, at, <laughs> it 
came back abnormal. I ended up having a colposcopy, but in that like three or four weeks that I had to wait for my colposcopy, the doctor I was seeing told me that I should be worried about cancer, which is not something a doctor should ever tell you. And she also told me that I might like basically like questioning my fertility in the future. That was just like a breaking point for me because my fears were wrapped around me dying or something happening to me dying. I just like couldn't get that out of my head. This is where I didn't really talk about the checking before, but this is kind of where checking came in. So as a uh, compulsive thing. So I did this with Ivy too when she was younger until probably she was like eight months old where I was constantly, constantly checking her. I would go in the room, I would like make sure she was breathing. I would check the camera constantly. If I would be like falling asleep and I'd be like, oh, I should check. And I'd be like, no, go back to sleep. If I wouldn't check, my brain told me that she had died. It was just like this constant loop. And I don't know how to explain to people that it's like, it's not just like typical mom fear. This was just like on another level, but. I don't need to justify myself. You guys understand what I'm saying. Moving on with the colposcopy, it just totally threw me off. You guys probably saw it in my videos. Mentally, I just changed. I couldn't take it anymore. I was so anxious all the time. I was watching videos about cervical cancer. I was reading about cervical cancer. I was calling doctors. I was setting up appointments for like multiple different things with my health. I was getting blood work done. I was just freaking out because I had myself convinced that I was going to die, that I was gonna get cervical cancer. Moving forward, didn't end up having that, thankfully, but I spent, you know, three and a half weeks, four weeks at like the highest level of anxiety that I had ever experienced, minus freshly postpartum. That was probably the worst that I felt like that first month or two postpartum. And it just broke me. I wasn't able to handle myself anymore. I was depressed, I was anxious about everything, I was in a bad mood, I would snap at people. It just was bad. My anxiety was so bad. I was crying about it, I was having panic attacks consistently, I was terrified that I was dying. If it wasn't one thing, it was another thing, and it just like kept going. At this point, I had already started working with a different therapist, not an OCD specialist, but a therapist I used to work with when I lived in Wheaton, who I really, really loved, and I just like her technique that she uses. So I went back to seeing her, which has been really helpful. And I also started a nervous system program and that food freedom program in early 2024, which was like helping me mentally until all the health crisis stuff came up. So after that colposcopy, I wanna say it was like two weeks later, I'm sitting on my couch, eating my favorite food, Indian food, swallow it and feel searing pain. I, long story short, swallowed a chicken bone, had to go to the emergency room, sat in the emergency room for 18 hours, 16 hours before they took it out of my throat. I had to go under, I was terrified. And when I went into the hospital, the whole time that I was there, I had a panic attack, I was dissociating, I was freaking out because again, I thought it was dying, I thought the bone was gonna move or it was gonna puncture something. And then on my x-ray, they told me that they saw like my thyroid was enlarged so then i was sitting there not only thinking about the fact that i had a bone in my throat but i was like oh my god i have thyroid cancer so i was freaking out till they did the ct scan and then the er doctor was like never mind <laughs> it was just a really bad night and finally after a few hours i ended up approving them to give me a little bit of anxiety medication because i just like could not chill i was just terrified they gave me the anxiety medication and granted this was like a, a strong anxiety medication but I told Ben, I had this moment where I felt like I could hear myself again for the first time in probably years, but at least since Ivy had been born, I felt like I could hear myself. It wasn't just this fear part or this anxiety or this OCD or this whatever, this like constant, constant, constant intrusive thought, intrusive thought, intrusive thought, check, 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 scared, 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 dying, dying, dying. All of a sudden I was just like, this is really scary, but I'm gonna be okay. And that was the first time, I'm getting like goosebumps, <laughs> that was the first time that I had felt that and been able to like bring myself back in and be like, we're okay, this is scary, but we're okay. And that was when I decided I was tired of waiting on anxiety medication. Not to go into like a big huge thing because I haven't been on anxiety medication very long, but 
I was kind of always anti-anxiety medication. My husband has been kind of like anti for his own body. He's just like afraid of putting something like that in his body. I had taken an antidepressant in college and it really messed with me mentally. Like I felt so weird and I hated it. So I just had this like preconception of it. I had watched people in my family go on and off different kinds and it would like make them gain weight or it would make them depressed or they would be on anxiety medication and then this medication and then this medication to like handle all of the side effects and I just didn't want to do that. I really loved that I had done all this like mental health work. I believe in therapy. I believe in meditation. I believe in all these things. I was sitting with my therapist after this whole hospital event and I told her what it was like being on the anxiety medication and she was like what's holding you back from it and we kind of talked through that and she was like you know a lot has happened in the last few years for you you're doing all of the work she's like I think maybe you just need a little help and like having a little bit of help is not a bad thing and that doesn't mean that you need that help forever that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you that you're not like woke enough or <laughs> or like you know good enough that you can't fix yourself sometimes you just need a little help and right now it feels that's what like it feels like you're telling me is i just was at this baseline like if a normal baseline of anxiety or like life is like here and then you'll have like little peaks of anxiety i was like here and when i would peak it would send me through the roof. I just needed some help to get back down to here. Even in the middle would be great, but like back down to here so that I could start not only utilizing all these mental health tools that I had and was working on where they could actually help me, but where I could be more present with Ivy, where I could not spend every moment of my day with my cortisol through the roof, I'm sure, or being terrified of all these things or seeing all these terrible intrusive thoughts or having to check things a thousand times to make sure that like the oven's off or, or that Ivy's still breathing or that the, I don't know, something's not wrong with me or, or Googling for the 30th time, like what does this, what does heart palpitations mean? Thing like, things like that. I just needed a little bit of help. And I had already talked to my new doctor about this. So she had already put in a prescription for a really low dose of what's called fluoxetine, which I believe is Prozac, but I'm not sure. Um, but she put me on a super, super low dose. Like normally I think they start you at a certain dose and she put me even lower than that for like two weeks. And then she upped me to the regular starting dose just to see like how that would help. So I've now been on fluoxetine for almost a month or no it's been a month just probably more like five weeks and I've noticed a really big difference I am still having some other health issues pop up so my health anxiety is still there a little bit but again instead of just being here like here all the time and like a spike like that just sends me off my rocker i'm kind of like here now and it'll be like a smaller spike less of them so i'm having much less intrusive thoughts i'm having much less just like constant anxiety i am still like i said being triggered so today my doctor recommended that i see a cardiologist because i'm again the heart palpitations and that kind of triggered a little bit of anxiety for me however the fact that i haven't been sitting here like reading a bazillion articles about it and like freaking myself out and like thinking that I have heart disease. I just got like a little nervous about it. It's popped in my head every now and then, but I'm not like stuck on it. But there are other things that kind of will spike me depending on like if I got enough sleep, if I ate like, and plus again, I have a couple other health things going on. So I don't wanna like say like, anxiety medication cured me because I, A, I haven't been on it very long. B, I'm not really sure what the health stuff I'm going through, if it's side effects or if it's my Hashimoto's or some of the mold stuff that we recently found in my testings. I'm kind of waiting to like figure some other stuff out to make sure that like this is continuing to work for me. But just from like a high level, I've noticed my anxiety has gone down quite a lot and it has made my everyday a a lot easier to handle to be honest i think i'm like afraid to say that it's working because i'm afraid that it'll stop working <laughs> for right now it is working for right now the help is amazing for me and for right now the anxiety has quieted 
a little bit. I'm still doing all of the mental health stuff that I normally do. I see a therapist every other week. I am still finishing that food freedom program. I am trying to get back into like a routine with not being on my phone as much, which can be triggering for me and things like that. So I think that continuing to work through that stuff will continue to hopefully positively affect my mental health. That's kind of where my long story with anxiety, postpartum anxiety and OCD comes in. Sorry if you can hear the water in the background. I would be happy to do a medication update in maybe like a few months and kind of keep you guys in the loop about how long I plan on staying on it. If it continues to help me, I'll probably talk about it in and out of my vlogs, but to do like a set video on it i think could be helpful i just don't want to like go into it too deeply right now because a medication is a really scary thing for a lot of people and i'm not out here trying to tell you that you should be on medication or you should do any of these things but i would like to just give my experience and like what that was like for me and if it helped and why it helped that is that if there's anything else specifically about my anxiety postpartum ocd that you would like me to go through a little bit deeper or dive deeper into it definitely let me know down in the comments and i can 100 do that i appreciate all of you thank you so much for watching this video and for listening to a very vulnerable story i didn't go in too deep on some of the intrusive thoughts and things like that because honestly a youtube doesn't like it when you talk about that kind of stuff but b there were there were some pretty scary thoughts of like scary things that could happen and yeah it's just like not something fun to talk about so if you deal with ocd if you deal with anxiety if you deal with postpartum anxiety or depression i hear you i see you i'm here for you if you ever need anything so thank you so much for watching this video thank you to all of you that really recommended looking into anxiety medication and caring about me when i was going through the really hard trend to transition in this last year. I really appreciate that. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.